G'day legends, it's Mark here from North Oz and in today's video I'm going to be installing a new speaker system into the 79 series Land Cruiser. I bought the 79 series knowing full well that the audio system in it was going to be terrible. It is as bad as everyone says it is. The two four inch speakers in it are not going to cut it. I've been spoiled by my previous vehicles in the past that have either had really good systems from the factory or that I've made a custom system myself. So I'm a little bit spoiled when it comes to audio. So to fix it, I've got these door pods from Department of the Interior. So I'm going to be installing these. These are, well, I do need to modify the door cards. So I need to take them off to be able to fit these up. So there is gonna be a little bit of work involved. And I do have a uh, wiring loom as well from another company. I can't remember where I got, I think, SVS or something like that. It's just a plug and play kit that should run some wires into the doors uh, to run these speakers, which are just some um, kicker speakers I bought from Autobahn. So hopefully you should be able to get out of this uh, for not too much money. And that's kind of the goal. This is just try to fix it for as little money as possible using some good quality equipment. So that's enough talking. Let's get stuck into it. And um, we'll do a little before and after and see if we can pick that up on camera to see uh, how much of a difference this actually makes. So let's go and see what those stock speakers are like now. Yeah, show them like it's still wrapped though. Now I'm in the game, I was on the bench. On the bench. First I was renting now I'm collecting rent. First it was the Beamer, now I want the bench. Spending all the back like here I go again. Outside says the chirp, now the camera's on. Told you I'ma make, keep the channels on. Why you acting different when the camera's on? Why you acting different like your paper long? Eight day wake up and I thank God. Bad decision got you wishing you could say now. I see the giddy you could get any. So this is everything that you need for the full speaker install. We are going to be getting rid of the original speakers and we're going to be sticking a new door uh, pod in there and we're going to be putting a new speaker in there as well. Now these are all the tools and all the hardware that you're going to need for the job. There does look like there's a bit here, but really it's not too much. But if you can start with this, this is gonna be a good jumping off spot for you. So some scissors are handy um, just to cut things like the wiring. So you will need, I'm just using a, uh, what do I have here? A uh, three millimeter. I'm using a three millimeter wire there. See if you can focus. So I'm using two lots of that, one for the positive, one for the negative. They didn't have black, but that's okay. That'll do the same thing. I've got some masking tape here as well, just to protect the door card while I am poking around, trying to get the uh, manual winding um, window lever thing off. Um, do have a lighter there to help out with some heat shrink if I need to use that. Do need a three millimeter drill bit. That is super important for this job. And I'll also be using a bigger drill bit too, um, just to create some larger holes because we do need to use a jigsaw to cut out this big circle here. Um, so there's my jigsaw there, just a basic one. El Cheapo. Um, I do have some sockets. You will need some sockets for this job. I think a 10 mil, uh, maybe a 12 mil as well. I can't remember. I'll put it up on the screen if I remember. And also we've got a screwdriver here. Also got a um, drill bit as well, just to speed up the process of the actual drilling of the door card. So this is the template from the Department of the Interior. So that's just going to um, give me a, a guide of where to drill, makes it super easy. Um, this is the, the hardware here that uh, is supplied for each of the door, uh, each of the door cards. So you can see we've got all these smaller ones here, go into all the smaller sections, um, and it's all labeled for us on this nice handy little sheet there. And apart from that, guys, that's pretty much it. Um, I will be using, I won't be doing any soldering. I'll be using these um, super handy spade terminals instead. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Some electrical tape and some sheathing to protect everything. Now, because mine is a workmate, yeah, I do have to do a little bit more creative wiring on mine. So I'll show you how to do that as well when we get stuck into it. So only one thing left to do now, pull the do door cards off, modify them to fit this on, and then wire up the speakers, and then we'll be good to go. Let's get stuck into it. The first step was to disconnect the battery using a socket, being sure to disconnect the negative terminal first. I masked around the door cards to protect the paint from the pry tool when removing the door cards. Something I really like about this Land Cruiser is the use of painted metals in the interior with limited use of plastics. I think that's pretty cool, something I've never seen before. 
To remove the door cards, I unscrewed the armrest with a Phillips head screwdriver before taping around the manual window crank. These door cards are easily damaged, so care must be taken. Using the thinnest pry tool I have, I push the plastic collar down to see where the end of the retaining clip was and then push the open-ended side of the clip towards the closed end of the clip. You can see that here by the way the retaining clip just pops out. I also push the retaining clip back into the crank after removing it as putting the crank back on is easy and it just needs to be pushed on. Super simple. I had troubles figuring this system out in the beginning, but the main idea is to unseat the clip so it no longer catches on the grooves of the manual winding male connector. Hopefully this footage gives you an idea of how the clip is held in so you can remove yours quickly. As the first time I did this, it definitely took me a lot of time to figure it out. Pop out the interior door handle by unscrewing the Phillips head and sliding the handle towards the front of the vehicle. I love how easy this truck is to take apart and put back together and all you need is a screwdriver, 10 millimeter socket and a pry tool. Next, pop out the plastic retaining clips behind the door card and be sure to pry as close to the clip as possible. Behind these cards are just a thin MDF and if you pry on an angle, you will damage the board around the clip, which will render that attachment point useless. Next, I use this really cool spin move to remove the door card. This means I don't have to stuff around with removing the entire door handle assembly, which I've seen some people do in some instructional videos. In this footage, you can see how many clips there are on the door card and their location. I hope this helps you out a little bit. With the door card removed, it's time to attach the new door speaker pods. A quick tip before you start is to mark a point of orientation on the cards, as this can get a bit confusing as you work on the cards. The template that the Department of the Interior provides is fantastic and saves a lot of time. However, all the markings and instructions are on the side of the template that suits the passenger door. Seeing as we're doing the driver's side door, I recommend taking some time to rewrite the placement of the correct screws and place a tick next to the holes that are the initial mounting screws to align the pod to the door card. Now I'm working on the initial mounting screws to correctly align the door pods. I pre-drilled the holes with a three millimeter drill bit and during this stage, I also cut out the circle for the speaker to sit in. To do this, I used a decent sized drill bit to allow the jigsaw blade to go into and cut along the circle. I was scared at first to do this. I checked many times to make sure everything would line up okay. While I'm cutting out a hole here for the speaker, can I get you guys to do me a massive favor and that is to click the subscribe button and also like the video. It helps me out in more ways than you can possibly imagine. These videos do take me a long time to make, so your support with subscribing, liking, and also your comments are always so greatly appreciated. So let's see how we get on with the rest of this audio install. Thanks again for watching. I screwed in the initial mounting screws to align the door pods and then flipped the card over to make sure it looks as it should. Now there are instructions online with the Department of the Interior and they do have some clearances there that you can check, just a double check. Finally, I pre-drilled the remaining holes and screwed in the recommended screws in there to attach the door pod to the door cart. Please note that I accidentally went too far with the drill bit once and went out the other side of the door pod. I recommend setting a depth limit on your drill bit or wrapping a piece of tape a few centimeters up the bit to avoid this. As I've said many times before, I'm not an expert, nor would I even qualify as mechanically minded, so I do make mistakes, but at least you will learn from mine so you don't repeat them. With the door pod nicely mounted, I replaced the retaining clips back in the door card and reinstalled the card with the new pod back into the door and also put all the hardware for all the handles and armrests all back in. Just follow the instructions earlier in the video, and follow them in reverse order and you'll get to where you need to be. Now I'm excited as the most challenging part of this install is done and I can start to see everything taking shape. Or so I thought. I was really disappointed to find out that my $130 plug and play kit from PVS Automotive did not work with my Workmate 79 due to having no pre-existing wiring that the GXL model has. I was disappointed to say the least, and after working all morning in 40 degree heat, I became disheartened that this would now not be a quick job, it's now gonna be more challenging. I called PVS Automotive, and they said to email their support email address. I emailed them with pictures and explanations only to receive a message back with a link to how to install the wiring loom and asking for my year model 79. After giving them their requested details, I have not heard back from them to this day, which is 13 days ago at the time of making this video. So after getting no support from PBS, I started stressing out about how I'm gonna undertake 
this now vastly more challenging task. Hadn't thought about this. I rang the Department of the Interior and they gave me a whole lot of suggestions for how to wire up the door speakers, including text messages with pictures and many phone calls. Their suggestions and post-sales support is greatly appreciated and they went above and beyond to help me out. A special shout out to Matt for his understanding and Rowan for taking time to explain all of the options. Now it's time to install the new speakers and solve this problem with the help of the Department of the Interior. My plan is very simple. Well, it has to be due to me being the farthest thing from an auto sparky. I made a very simple wiring loom that connects the speakers that will be in the door to the existing wiring of the four inch speakers in the dashboard. It's just a simple red positive and blue negative wire. To get started on this new solution, I clipped on the kicker wiring that it comes with and used spade connectors to attach the positive and negative wires to the positive and negative wires of the ones that I put together in my own loom, which I pulled through a sheath. You can see that on the video here. The beauty of this setup is that I can change out these speakers with any other six inch speaker very easily in the future. Now it's time to run the wiring from the door to the cabin. I first removed the grommet and drilled a hole big enough to fit my loom through. Then I made a small cut in the door plastic and pulled the wires through the door and out of the hole where the grommet was to then feed this cable through the grommet. <laughs> I plugged the grommet back into the door and I left some length of wire in the door to avoid pulling the wires out when opening and shutting the door. Now it's time to remove the factory speaker cover by undoing the two 10mm bolts and removing the speaker which is held in by also two 10mm bolts. As the plug on the end of the factory loom is a motor company loom, it isn't reusable for this install. So I cut it off and replaced it with opposite spade terminals to plug into the end of my custom loom. I would like to point out that Toyota doesn't use red and black wires like you would think to indicate positive and negative wires. So I always use the darker color wire as the negative, or you could test the wires with a voltmeter, but I don't have one of those. I also had to cut back some of the factory sheathing for that wiring as it didn't leave much room for the terminals to be attached. I found that I didn't have a wire stripper small enough either for the factory wire, so I ended up just using my scissors to cut gently around the plastics and pulled it away using my fingernail. I ran the wires into the cabin through the gaps around the door hinge. I found that that was actually a really good way to get it into the vehicle as I tried going in through the firewall, but it was just becoming too difficult to try to get those wires all wrapped around in through the fender. So I ended up going through the door hinge, which worked out really well. There was only enough room for the two wires and no sheathing, so I wrapped the wires in electrical tape instead to protect them from rubbing on the metal. I ran the wires up into the dash area, connected the spade terminals before I heat wrapped them to prevent them from touching each other and causing electrical problems later down the line. I also recommend cutting and terminating the wires unevenly where you can, leaving a length of wire on either the positive or negative side, as this will also help avoid the terminals touching should your electrical tape or heat shrink fail. With all the wiring in place, I can now put back the factory speaker cover, finish screwing in the new speaker and attaching the speaker grill. Now let's listen to how the new system sounds. Yeah, show them I can still wrap them. Well guys, that concludes today's video on how to install an audio system setup in your 79 series Land Cruiser, but more specifically, 
how you can do it in a work make. So I haven't seen any videos on any workarounds on how to get that wiring into the vehicle. I did have, and I would have mentioned this already, a PVS automotive harness, but that only works with the GXL, which they didn't say. So a little bit disappointed about that, and that was a waste of money. I will get a refund, but you know, you lose money on shipping and stuff. Anyway, it's all part of a learning experience. So I hope that that helped you guys out and hopefully it didn't cost you any money uh, to learn. Learn from my mistakes. Um, I do want to give a shout out to the Department of the Interior and Matt and Rowans, especially from there, because they actually helped me try to figure out a solution to this. They actually mentioned going through the firewall might be a better idea, but I thought I'll just give it a go, trying to go through the hinges first and listen, if it starts to wear away at that wiring, then I will end up running it through the firewall grommet there. So apart from that, guys, that's pretty much it. Um, I'm, you know, I would have shown you the test um, now of the audio and it sounds amazing just with those two um, six inch speakers in the vehicle, makes it sound so much better. It's kind of like, it's not really a big vehicle. So having just like one or two you know, or a couple decent uh, speakers in there makes it sound a lot better. Now, before you go guys, can I ask you to like the video and also subscribe to the channel. It helps me out in more ways than you could possibly imagine. And I do still have one more interior video to do on the vehicle. Like I said, if you haven't seen my build plan video yet, go ahead and check that out. I'll leave a card at the end of this video for you to check out. Uh, I have, I'm still in that process of um, kitting out the interior because that is the stage that I'm up to in the build plan. So if you haven't seen what this thing will, or very close to what this thing will look like with the rendering and me talking through it, make sure you go ahead and check that out as well. We covered some pretty interesting topics and it might spark a few ideas of your own. to have a look at and click on. If you haven't subscribed and liked this video, that would help me out a lot. And I hope that what we covered here today